Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Tegra Note 7. Now this is a tablet made by EVGA, a close partner to NVIDIA. Really, this is NVIDIA's baby, in my opinion, much like the Shield. However, they actually had to at least give EVGA credit where it was due, even though I suspect that EVGA also built the Shield. Again, that's pure speculation. I have to say, this $200 tablet has blown me away. Uh, for all of you out there who thought the Nexus 7 was just impossible to beat when it came to its price point. Uh, we actually see a tablet here that rivals it and I think for many users outdoes it. Uh, one of the key features of course, first and foremost, uh, is the stylus which I'm removing right now and much like Samsung as soon as you remove that stylus uh, the tablet is aware. By the way we're looking at a 1280 by 800 resolution IPS display which many will feel is a little bit low, especially when compared to the Nexus 12 at a similar price point, even though this is, or Nexus 7, I said Nexus 12, uh, even though this is a less expensive device, at least at suggested retail, you have to factor in that despite the lower res IPS display, both of them do have IPS displays, by the way, you are getting stylus input, which at least NVIDIA is marketing as superior to even what Samsung and other competitors are putting out there, like Toshiba. But beyond that, a Tegra 4 quad-core processor that just completely takes uh, the Nexus 7 uh, to lunch, basically. It pounds it. This is a beast. Only a gig of RAM here, but not going to really get into a comparison. Now, two of the apps uh, that NVIDIA includes with their direct stylus technology, which I've so far been really impressed with. In fact, I could start to see why it's arguably uh, being given credit to be better than the Wacom experience uh, that you get out of uh, the Note lineup, whether we're talking about the 10 or the 3. Right now, I'll just do a little bit of drawing. You'll see some of the sensitivity. I can go very fine or, you know, get thicker strokes. It all depends on pressure sensitivity. And you can turn the stylus in order to get different uh, sensitivity. So, if you know, if I'm on the finest point of the stylus, I'm going to get the finest production possible. If I go to a wider part of the brush stroke, basically you're going to get a thicker line. So really impressive. What I was most impressed with really was just the lack of lag. I could actually say, and this is going to sound a little bit crazy, that there is less latency in this writing, this stylus experience, than you're going to find with the Samsung products. So that's giving an incredible amount of credit to NVIDIA here with what they've done because legitimately I've yet to see a stylus perform this well in terms of sensitivity. Uh, that's not to say that they have the software development or of course Wacom behind it uh, for true pressure sensitivity as opposed to the direct stylus which I'm not even sure what they employ uh, but uh, at least what they've done in terms of the design of using that tip of the stylus to give you different strokes and then uh, not that you're supposed to but bringing out the other end and getting even you know wider brush strokes so that you can really you know change completely how you use it really impressive so this is one application that comes stock and you can use the lasso effect you know in the event there was something I drew there that I wanted to share um, you also have the ability to turn off uh, or you know switch in and out of stylus mode only so uh, these are all little things that they've done that I'm impressed with. Let's leave it at that. In terms of the other uh, Tegra-based, or excuse me, not Tegra-based apps, but the stylus-based apps, the other one we had is the Write application. And fairly simple, no different than creating a memo. Going to go ahead and just start writing. And there is palm rejection, by the way. Now, this is where, even though I spoke about the real-time difference in terms of latency, the actual penmanship, not that I, by any means, have strong penmanship, but the actual um, realistic performance of the Note and Wacom experience is superior. So even though this is a phenomenal value to have a stylus at this price point with such little latency, I don't find that I get an accurate representation or as smooth 
or even paper-like experience that I do out of the Note. And that's to be expected. $200 device as opposed to the Note 8, which is still running for well over $300, closer to $400. And, of course, the Note 10, even the older ones, are still around $400. And, of course, the brand new one, $550 and $600. But it's not terrible. It's certainly, uh, as it didn't, it's now, didn't seem to be picking anything up. But clearly this was not meant to be written. But... It's still very solid. And if I had to compare it to anything else, that's where we'd run into something. How many other things could I compare this to right now in this category at this price point? You know the answer already if you've been doing the research, nothing. So there's nothing else to compare the actual stylus experience to. Granted, it's far from perfect. It's still very good having problem backing out of there. It's because I'm in stylus mode only. Pretty simple. Forgot I enabled that. Let's talk about Tegra Zone. Uh, key enhancement, obviously, to any Tegra-based device is that because you have that Tegra 4 quad-core processor, not only do you have best-in-class mobile performance, you also have best-in-class graphics. So you have access to the Tegra Zone where you can go ahead and test out all sorts of games that are actually uh, enhanced and give far greater performance uh, with the Tegra chip under the hood. In other words, play these games on Qualcomm uh, or Samsung-based chips, and you simply won't get the textures, extra details, uh, effects that you will with this device. So this is a great portable gaming console if you didn't want to spend the full 300 for the Shield, which has the same processor but only clocked 100 uh, megahertz higher and an extra gig of RAM. And a little bit more versatility, obviously, since it has a controller built in. Very easy to pair a Bluetooth controller or use one uh, with the USB host function, and you're good to go as far as gaming. So that's a really nice thing to have with this tablet. I will uh, be doing a gaming demo with Dead Trigger 2, which is a perfect uh, game for this. But again, a reminder, you have that Tegra Zone for applications. Now, a very stock experience, and that's where this tablet really does remind me of the Nexus 7. After all, let's remember, NVIDIA was the heart of the previous generation Nexus 7 and, of course, the original Zoom, and they lost that business, which was sad. Uh, and here they now find themselves, and by the way, they didn't just lose that business, they were in pretty much every Android tablet for almost the first two years of the platform pushing into the tablet sector. Now they find themselves regrouping and focusing on what they do best. So since they're no longer in the Nexus 7 2013, which I have right over here, and you know Google chose to go with Qualcomm for whatever reason, that really did open the door for NVIDIA to not only make their own 7-inch tablet, because why throw away you know an entire R&D de development department and um, all the, at least, progress they felt they had made, and I don't blame them. So they didn't throw it away. They brought it together here, arguably in the Shield as well, even though that's a completely different direction. And we basically have NVIDIA's very own Nexus device. This is very stock. You can see almost zero bloat here. I mean, look at the app drawer. In terms of what we've got here, very little. I mean, outside of the direct stylus, I'm looking for any other junk, as you might want to call it. I mean, their camera app is far from junk. Tegra Zone, yes, you could live without, but people who don't realize the gaming prowess of this device need to know. Everything is stock. I mean, they threw in Zen Pinball. I mean, Google Talk is on there, Voice Search, right? This is all as stock as it could possibly be. Uh, so that's important to note. And then if I jump into settings, by the way, they maintained also the Nexus style <clears throat> dual uh, notifications. So if I jump into, by the way, brightness is at full the whole time for those of you wondering. And go down to about tablet. Check for system updates right now. You can see we've got no system updates. And we are running 4.22. This is a build dated November 12th, so I'm not expecting anything immediate. But uh, the device launched on the 19th, I believe. So even though it's out of stock everywhere, I wouldn't be shocked if they do update it relatively soon. Uh, build quality, really solid. I have to say I read 
a lot of negative feedback about the fact that it's all plastic and that it just isn't made well and my experience speaks to the complete opposite. Yes, it's all plastic. It's also only $200 and has one of the best processors as well as HDMI out, a micro SD card slot for storage expansion, front and rear cameras with one of the better camera applications um, put together for any tablet on the market. Uh, you also have a stylus which again is unmatched other than by of course Samsung really and in this form factor there is no other competitor so really good things here uh, wireless display I mean I'm not going to take you through all these things but Nvidia knows what they're doing here I mean they are part of the basis for how far Android has come so the only thing I could really look for here to be negative on is the screen and quite frankly it's beyond my expectations that was another thing where people um, at least feedback was so negative I was expecting something terrible and the reality is the screen is quite nice despite the fact that it doesn't have a 1080p or higher resolution uh, the front camera yeah VGA leaves a lot to be desired but these front facing speakers are absolutely beast and I'll just demo that finally I haven't done any web browsing let's jump around a little bit Uh, another thing missing, dual band Wi-Fi, but at $200, I'm not really allowed to talk about dual band Wi-Fi necessarily. Uh, so even if that's something that you might find on another device, it's not really fair. This is a mobile site. Let me go to the full website. And the performance is just perfect. And that's what I expect out of uh, the Tegra 4. It's consistent in that regard. Every device that I've seen it run on, I mean, think about the fact that the Tegra 4 is in Surface 2 that I've reviewed uh, and many other tablets, even though Surface 2 is not Android-based, that are just twice the price, if not two and a half times the price of this device, especially the, the Toshiba tablets. So really, so much to like here. I mean, the only downside really is that gig of RAM and that front-facing camera. I wish there was NFC. I could come up with a whole list of things that I wish that were here, but the reality is is that you have to value this tablet for exactly what you get out of the box, and that's incredible performance, great value, and by the way, battery life is also fantastic. So NVIDIA knows what they're doing. In fact, it almost seems to me like the fact that the reins were taken away, uh, the limitations of the partnership, and I'm not knocking Google because... Anyone who follows my channel knows how fond I am of what they do, but the Nexus environment isn't exactly ideal for every user, even though Google's designing it for every user. And that's where NVIDIA said, look, we're going to put everything together that the average user maybe, or in most cases, felt was missing, and then throw in something to really make it unique with the stylus. So really like what they've done here. Um, I'm finding it difficult to find really anything to complain about Let's do a voice search. How about that? Because there isn't a lot to complain about. The Digital Digest. Let's go ahead and search that. Oh, in fact, you know what? I'm going to take it, do it from the home page. The Digital Digest. Right there. It didn't get the the, therefore not the first result. And let's let's stick with the stock browser, since that's what I think a lot of users will use, even though Chrome is pre-installed there. And let's go ahead and look at something that's a competitor, but not really, in my opinion, because this is a more, much more powerful device, and it's less expensive. Make sure volume's all the way up. Oh, went the wrong way. Now, if that wasn't some great lack of buffering, I don't know what was. But overall, hopefully this demo served to show at least a taste or give a taste of what the Tegra Note is capable of. I give NVIDIA and EVGA a lot of credit for putting this together, especially at this price point, which means it's only going to go down in price, by the way, folks. No fingerprints on this back. Congratulations, except for maybe on the matte finish part, but the soft touch, grippy, uh, rubberized plastic area, absolutely nothing. 
Again, build quality, really solid, no dead pixels, no backlight bleed. Really, I don't know what else you could ask for in a $200 7-inch tablet under any mobile OS from any manufacturer. So a lot of credit to both companies since at least when this was first hatched, I know a lot of people thought it was going to be dead on arrival. Instead, it has been sold out since it launched at Newegg. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.